Hey everybody, so today we're going to be learning from chapter 1, lesson 4, ratio tables. So, um, first thing I want to talk about when we're talking about ratio tables is equivalent ratios. Okay, um, and let's talk about the word equivalent. Equivalent just means the same. So let's write that down. So here I wrote equivalent, and in parentheses, I'm going to write same, so we know that it means the same. So equivalent ratios, okay, and I wrote that in the main ideas column. Um, in the notes column, we are going to be um, doing a little example to show us what equivalent ratios are. Um, again. Just a little reminder, please be writing this in your table of contents. Um, you should be writing Chapter 1, Lesson 4, Ratio Tables, as the title for this um, lesson. Okay. So, um, let's say I wanted to make some orange juice. I think it's something many of us have made before. Um, and to make orange juice, there's a specific uh, recipe. And there's a ratio of orange juice to water. So let's kind of draw that recipe. So OJ orange juice recipe. Okay. So in my orange juice recipe, I definitely need to use some orange juice. So I'm going to show that by drawing an orange dot, and I definitely also need to use some water. Okay, so this is the recipe that I'm using. There is um, one part orange juice to three parts water. Okay, um, that's my ratio. Let's say I wanted to double this recipe. If I double this recipe, I'm going to add another part orange juice and three more parts water. Okay, so I've just doubled the recipe. Let's say I wanted to triple the original recipe. Well, then I need to add one more part orange juice and three more parts water because I want to keep the ratio the same. Okay, so Let's go over this again. We have one part orange juice, three parts water for our orange juice recipe. If I wanted to double that, well now I've got two parts orange juice and six parts water. If I wanted to triple our original recipe, I would now have three parts orange juice and nine parts water. Okay, if you noticed, I'm keeping our ratio the same. I'm not changing anything. I'm just making it a little bit bigger. Okay, so let's um, put this into a ratio table, something we're going to be learning to do today. So in our ratio table, you're going to have your labels and you're going to have your numbers. Okay, so first I'm going to put my labels first. What are we talking about? We're talking about orange juice. And we're talking about water, H2O. H2O also stands for water. Okay. Okay, not the best of straight lines, but you can use a ruler on yours. All right, so first I'm going to put our first ratio, what we put in the first um, recipe, our original recipe. So in the original recipe, we put one part, one part orange juice to three parts water. 
okay? When we doubled that, over here, we wanted to double this, so we doubled it. Now we have two parts orange juice. Two, one, two, three, four, five, six parts water. And when we wanted to triple this original recipe, we now had three parts orange juice to nine parts water. Okay, so this is a great example of equivalent ratios. So we didn't change the ratio, we kept it the same. Okay, here we have one to three, here we have two to six, here we have three to nine. We have the same ratio, okay, it's equivalent, it's just bigger. Think when we did um, the fractions project and you had the original recipe, the friend recipe, and the family recipe. You just made the original recipe smaller for the friends and bigger for the family. You didn't change it. You kept all the ingredients the same as far as the ratio. Okay, so that's kind of what we're doing here too. We're keeping the ratios the same. So if I were to simplify this two six, I would get one third. And if I were to simplify this three ninths, I would get one third. Okay, equivalent ratios. So let's move on um, to talking about another example. We're still going to be using equivalent ratios, but we're going to add another idea onto that. So here's our other example. So Joey, Joey is in a, um, I believe he's the top hot dog eater, and we're going to use a hot dog competition for our, our example. So Joey ate. 66 hot dogs in 12 minutes. How many hot dogs, HD stands for hot dogs, how many hot dogs did he eat in two minutes? Okay, so I'm going to make a ratio table to show this problem. Um, I have my first ratio though, 66 hot dogs for every 12 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to put that into my ratio table. So HD, again, stands for hot dogs, and then we've got time. Okay. So my first ratio I'm going to put in the table, so 66 hot dogs for every 12 minutes. Okay, and I want to get this down to 2 minutes. So what I want is 2 minutes. So i got to think, how can I get from 12 to 2? And there's many different ways to do this. But remember what we talked about yesterday in our warm-up? Whatever you do to one number, you have to do to the other number. So if this was in a fraction form, okay, if this looked like if our ratio was in a fraction, whatever we do to the top, we have to do to the bottom. Whatever we do to the denominator, we have to do to the numerator. Okay, so if you are going to multiply it or divide anything, you have to do the same to the top and the bottom. So, just looking at this, I see that they're both even numbers, and that 2 can go into both of them. So, I'm going to divide both by 2 and see if I can get closer to this number. Okay. And then I divide by 2, 66 divided by 2. If you need, you can use a calculator or just do it in your head. It's simple math. 66 divided by 2 is 33. 12 divided by 2 is 6. Okay, so I got a little bit closer to 2 minutes, but I'm not there yet. So I'm going to have to do one more calculation maybe. Okay, how can I get from 6 to 2? Well, I think if I divided 6 and the 33 by 3, 
I would be able to get this ratio that I want. And if you're unsure how, what number to use to divide so you get two, you can just put it into your calculator or think how many times is two going to six. Okay, so I'm going to do six divided by three and I'll get two. And whatever I do to this number, I have to do to that number. So I'm going to divide 33 by 3 as well. Okay, 33 divided by 3 is 11. All right, so now, as you can see, because I did the same to the top and to the bottom, I kept my ratios the same. So all of my ratios here, they are equivalent ratios. I did the same to the top and the bottom. And that's something that we're going to be focusing on. Okay, main idea is doing the same thing to the top and to the bottom. All right, um, so I have my equivalent ratios. So in 12 minutes, Joey ate 66 hot dogs. For every 6 minutes, he ate 33 hot dogs. And the answer we want, for every two minutes, he eats 11 hot dogs. And this is if he goes at a constant rate. So let's say Joey does go at a constant rate. So for every two minutes, he eats 11 hot dogs. Okay, and there's our answer. Um, so let's talk about scaling. Because... It's something we did in here, and I want us to define it and talk about it. Okay, so scaling. There's two terms here. There's scale back and there's scale forward. When we scale back, we're dividing a number, okay? And we do, whatever we do to the top, we have to do to the bottom. Okay, so I said divide a number, divide a number. And if you think about it, that's what we did here. We scaled back. We scaled the ratio back. So we divided by a number. Okay, we did that both times. The other term is scale forward. Okay, when we're scaling forward, we're multiplying a number. Okay, we did not do that in this ratio table, but you can. When you're scaling back, you're getting the ratio to become smaller. When you're scaling forward and you're multiplying, you're getting the ratio to be bigger. So let's do one more example, our last one of a ratio table where we scale back and we scale forward. Okay, so let's say our example says we have cans of corn on sale. 10, okay, so we have cans of corn on sale and there's 10 cans for $4. How much for 15 cans? Okay. So let's make our ratio table. We're going to have cans and we're going to have money. Okay, so I'm going to start off with our original ratio. It says that we have 10 cans for every $4. So I'm going to put a 10 here and a 4 here. Okay, I know we have 10 cans for every $4. What I want to know is how much would it cost for 15 cans. So I'm going to put a 15 here. Okay, and I need to come up with a way. How do I get go from 10 to 15. 
Now there is a number you could multiply, but we're going to go in another direction right now. Okay. So I'm going to need to scale back and scale forward. To get from 10 to 15, first I'm going to need to scale back. Okay, so I'm going to divide both 10 and 4 by 2. So here I'm scaling back. 10 divided by 2 is 5, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. Okay, so now it looks a little easier, right, how I could get from 5 to 15. Okay, I can come up with a way to get from 5 to 15. Going from 10 to 15 looked a little bit harder, okay, but this seems like something we could do. So we're going to have to scale forward. Okay, to scale forward, I'm going to multiply. And I'm going to multiply a number that will get me from 5 to 15. That's going to be 3. Whatever I do to the top, I'm going to do to the bottom. Okay, so 2 times 3 is 6. So 15 cans cost $6. For every 15 cans, we pay $6. Okay, so... That is your lesson for today. Last thing I want to add is over here, we could have also gone, done this in one step. So we could have done 12 divided by 6 to get 2. And you would have had to do the same for the top. So there's more than one way to do this, okay? There's multiple ways. Um, you can do it in one step or two steps. You can scale back or scale forward. We'll work on that today.